Morrison Formation is one of the most well-known prehistoric formations on the planet. It was once a paradise with wet seasons and scorching dry seasons and home of many animals, especially many sauropods and theropods. One of these theropods was something else compared to the other carnivores in the region, that being Ceratosaurus, meaning horned lizard. This animal lived 153 to 148 million years ago during the Carigian to Tithonian stages of the late Jurassic period. Ceratosaurus was a very big dinosaur, but not a small one either. This carnivore could reach sizes of 700 kilograms on average, and at maximum size, Ceratosaurus can weigh 950 kilograms to a ton. And when it comes to length, this carnivore can reach lengths of 70 meters. Although it wasn't the biggest predator in the region, it was still very big. There are some people who think Ceratosaurus was smaller, reaching sizes of 260 kilograms or somewhere like that, and lengths of 5 to 6 meters. This is because they don't really know much or just don't research at all or believe what they see or stuff. So allow me to help with that. The 260 kilogram and 5 to 6 meter long Ceratosaurus estimate is valid, but it's not valid for the maximum size of the animal. That estimate actually goes to juvenile Ceratosaurus specimen known as USNM4735, which is the Ceratosaurus shown above. The maximum size comes from other specimens which are adult Ceratosaurus, like the well-known UMNHVP5278 specimen. I hope that helps people understand and know the actual size of Ceratosaurus. Ceratosaurus is a member of a clade named after it, known as Ceratosauria, which lasted from 199.3 million years ago during the beginning of the reign of the dinosaurs to 66 million years ago when the reign ended, meaning that this clade lasted for 127.3 million years. Ceratosaurus also doesn't just include the family Ceratosauridae, but it also includes Noceridae and Abelosauridae. Something else that is amazing is that early members of this clade started with average sized arms, like many theropods. Millions of years of evolution later, their arms decrease in size, as shown here with the arms of Ceratosaurus and Carnotaurus. They must have not needed their arms much, and instead, like Tyrannosaurus evolved jaws and teeth designed for biting and picking up the prey. Ceratosaurus was kind of in the middle of the stuff, still having the teeth designed for slashing, but they also had a stronger bite force, and their arms were shorter than others. I'm sure many of you are beyond impressed with how incredible and bizarre Ceratosaurus really is already, but that's just the beginning. Now let's talk about the history of Ceratosaurus. <laughs> Ceratosaurus changed a lot ever since 1883 and 1884. That was the year the animal was discovered. Back then, a farmer known as Marshall Parker Belch discovered its bones, which were still connected to each other. It was given the kangaroo-like posture like the other theropods and the ornithopods had at the time, with their tail dragging across the ground. Later on, as the years passed, Early paleo media included Ceratosaurus in movies, and they had Ceratosaurus instead of Tyrannosaurus fight animals like Triceratops, and we all know how cool that is. Many people seemed to love Ceratosaurus a lot at that time. Later, during the 1920s, they looked more like the modern day counterparts since people had a bigger understanding of the animal, and there was no more of the kangaroo like posture given how there was a never sign of the tail making contact with the ground, <laughs> and there were more bones discovered. In this reconstruction, we have the skull, some vertebrae, hips, femur, and other bones, despite no signs of ribs. Later, during the 2000s, Brooks Britt and some colleagues had claimed that one of the Ceratosaurus species that were discovered was a juvenile, which must have been USNM4735. And now, on to modern day, where we are currently at the best understanding of the animal for now. Although it hasn't appeared much in films as it did before nowadays, it's still acknowledged a lot, and it's even in many games like Nigel Barber's Prehistoric Kingdom, 
Path of Titans, The I.O., and more. And there are now many people who have this Tyrannosaurus as their favorite dinosaur, if not favorite dinosaur of all time. And we also know now that Tyrannosaurus had Osteoderms, as you can see at the back of the Predator. And we also know how it had a lifestyle like other theropods, but slightly better, which is something we will talk about now. Ceratosaurus lived in the Morrison Formation, which is in North America, and in Tendagora Formation in German East Africa. We'll be talking about Morrison Formation's Ceratosaurus first. Despite being a great paradise, Morrison Formation was a very dangerous place. There were many carnivores living alongside Ceratosaurus, like Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, Sauropagnax, and Marshosaurus. And most of the prey were giants and extremely dangerous to take on. One of these were simply the many sauropods that lived here. Others, like Stegosaurus and Gargoyleosaurus, were armored and too very dangerous. And others, like Drysaurus and Camposaurus, had good eyesight so they could spot a predator and take off. Which another defense would be their speed and stamina, depending on what predator it was. Another method for a use as a protection is living together, like Camposaurus laying along that Stegosaurus. We know this because we want to discover footprints of Stegosaurus and Camposaurus that were made at the same place and at the same time. This would have been very hard to catch prey since there were eyes, speed, and pure danger there all at once. Not to mention Ceratosaurus shared niches with larger carnivores like Allosaurus. So, how did Ceratosaurus manage to thrive here? Ceratosaurus, like many predators, would have gone for the weak ambush or have hunted loose gangs to take down larger and more dangerous prey when it needed to, scavenge for food as well. But I'm not saying that the Ceratosaurus was a scavenger, not like Jack Horner said about Tyrannosaurus Rex because he didn't know what he was talking about. Anyways, Ceratosaurus would have hunted many animals like Dryosaurus, Camposaurus, Young Stegosaurus, and Sauropods on its own. Now, the Ceratosaurus would also have been like cannibals like most theropods. Even more interesting, although they didn't do it most of the time, Ceratosaurus also went for aquatic prey like fish and even crocodiles. We know this because some of its teeth were designed for catching animals like these and tearing their flesh. And when Ceratosaurus hunted in these games, they would also go for adult stegosaurs and even sauropods at larger sizes. And granted, they did share niches with allosaurs and other theropods, but they wouldn't have fought a lot of the time. And theropods like Martian Source were smaller than Ceratosaurus, and Ceratosaurus would, make, would win all the time. Sorry. And the lifestyle of Ceratosaurus in Africa. Ceratosaurus in Africa lived a similar lifestyle, but with some differences. In fact, Tendagora Formation was actually like another version of Morrison Formation. Ceratosaurus was probably the same size as Morrison Formation's Ceratosaurus, and probably had less to deal with. Instead of Stegosaurus being there, the smaller Kentosaurus was there, and the single Ceratosaurus would be able to take it down instead of more than one. And there was still an abundance of predators besides Ceratosaurus there, and some of the rivals of this animal could have been Ostafricosaurus when the Ceratosaurus hunted aquatic prey, but most of the time they would have dealt with more terrestrial predators like the Pteropistosaurus, and Laphrosaurus and others. The difference about this though is that these predators are not as big as the Morrison Formation's giant carnivores like Sauropagnax and Corvosaurus. So the Tentaguru Formation predators would have been less of a problem for Stratosaurus to deal with. Stratosaurus didn't really have much of a problem living in both of its environments. Now, what is my favorite thing about the Stratosaurus? I love every dinosaur, and in a paleo video like this, I would say what is my favorite thing about the animal. My favorite thing about the animal is how successful it was, and most importantly, of its recognizable horns. The horns of Ceratosaurus would have been used for intimidating rivals, or recognize each other, or to impress females. These horns must have gotten bigger and more colorful as they grew into adults, and it could have been more for males, 
which Prehistoric Kingdom made a very good example with this. It's a very impressive feature. This could have been the same with other animals. It's actually the same reason why Cryolophosaurus is my favorite dinosaur. I really love the dinosaurs that have very impressive heads, like horns and crests. They can be so colorful and so impressive. The Ceratosaurus, although not being one of my top 10 dinosaurs, really impresses me. It's an incredible animal like every other prehistoric animal. But, how did Ceratosaurus go extinct? What could have led such a successful animal to extinction? With our current understanding of the animal, we aren't completely sure why Ceratosaurus went extinct. So we're going to use some speculation. As millions of years passed, Morrison formation must have had its wet seasons probably having less rain, and the dry seasons getting more brutal. Herbivores must have fled to find places where there are sources of water and good vegetation. Some carnivores stayed and relied on where food, food sources were left, while also searching for water. Many animals were purged during the dry season. Pear, sorry including animals like Ceratosaurus, not to mention that fish and crocodiles, which are food sources of Ceratosaurus, were gone, so it would have been slightly harder to find more food. And as millions of years passed, Ceratosaurus lost food sources like Apatosaurus and Gargoyliosaurus when they died out. So, both of these animals left, and Ceratosaurus relied on the rest of the food sources for the time. And more fish died out, but they're pretty much like a seasonal food source. So that doesn't really count for the most part. Now, as shown here, Stratosaurus also suffered some loss of habitat because places got drier. Although I probably said that already. Anyways, things got drier in the Morrison Formation. And so, Stratosaurus had less food sources and water during the working dry seasons, and even completely lost some food supplies, and they too were doomed. This could have been the same for attended guru formation Ceratosaurus. And remember, this is just speculation, so don't see this as the true answer of the Ceratosaurus extinction until we really know. But we do know that Ceratosaurus went extinct and there is some reason. Which is lying in the way for us to be discovered, obviously. And now the last thing, the importance of Ceratosaurus to paleontology. Ceratosaurus thrived well in its environment for 5 million years, while living alongside larger predators like Allosaurus, Corvosaurus, and Sauropagodax, and it ate anything from fish to even sauropods when working together in this gang. Even each other. And we know this because they developed teeth that were designed for this. They show us that predators could and would take situations or even evolution to their maximum advantage. Well, not really evolution, but you know what I mean. They were such successful animals. <laughs> Who knows how they would go if they came back from extinction. Soon there will be more to carry on where others left off on their research and understanding of Ceratosaurus. These animals are absolutely brilliant, and there is still so much to know about it. Remember, if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. Merry Christmas to those who are celebrating today, and I'll see you on the next one.